What's up guys? It's Monkey Bacon here from Sock Monkey Development, and today we're going to start a new series. So this was suggested by like about two people from the last video I did, and it seemed that it helped them. And they would like me to do it in sort of a further in-depth way. So, I decided we're going to start a new series that's not going to be too long, maybe like five videos, I'm guessing. I'm going to try to keep them pretty short. And it's just going to be us making a game, uh, game together. And I've tried this in the past, but it usually just strands off to doing more specific tutorials and stuff. But this one's just totally dedicated to making a game. And when it starts out, it may be a really like simple stuff that you already know. But if you stick with it and watch the entire thing, I'm sure you'll learn some new things and get better at this. Okay, so I'm going to make a new file. New file. New file. I'm going to save it in our new game folder, which is Super Mega Box Extreme. So we have main.lu. Let's make all the functions. I really hope this is, like, even viewable, because I'm getting... My computer's getting a lot of lag because I'm using QuickTime Player. That's why when I live streamed before, it's a lot easier because it doesn't make my computer lag at all. Okay, so we're just setting up the basic foundation for our game. Let's just keep the width and height the default width and height actually for now. Um, so this game I'm thinking is going to be a top-down survival game. I've made two games similar to this for the Ludum Dare, and it's just something I'm pretty good at now. And, yeah. It's something that, that you can learn a lot from, and and I think it's really good because it's really easy to understand everything. I might do a platformer later, if you guys want that. Uh, I know a lot of people are asking about collision detection and all that stuff, so I could do that. But for now, we're just going to do a simple top-down like the next five videos or so and and also like I said like I always say if you guys ever want a uh, another tutorial on something leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you okay enough talking let's start let's make a new uh, player folder we'll just call it player.lua save it right next to main.lua and let's require it okay so the player again I'm probably I'm not going to be using art for this video so, uh, if you guys want to, that's cool. But for now, let's just start out with a loading function for the player. Oh god. Okay. Player.x equals uh, 5. Player.y equals 5. Player.x val equals 0. Player.y val equals 0. Player.friction, let's set it to 9.5. And let's set this, oh god. No, I don't want to buy Splend Text too. <laughs> Let's set the speed to like. Oh, awesome. Let's set the speed to about. 2,200, 500. See. Or 2,250. See if that's a good speed. So, um, player.load. Let's put this into main.load. Let's put this in love.load. So this will run as soon as the game starts up. I, I tend to comment this part out. I like to organize my love.load a lot. Okay. Um, cool. So now all those should be loaded as soon as the game starts up. So let's make the parent functions. Again, like I explained in a tutorial in the last video, um, I just like doing this. It's really, in my eyes, it's a lot more organized. You guys can just stick to putting functions directly into main.lua. But I like to do this, and if you don't understand exactly what this does, you will. You, I guarantee you, you will in just a second. So let's do draw underscore player function update underscore player. And let's put these into main.lua. Cool. So. Whenever we make a new function inside of love, inside of player.lua, we can just drop it right into uh, these two parent function functions. Okay, let's draw the player real quick. Let's set a player width and height variable. 
as well. We'll stick to 50. We could uh, work with like some camera zooming and stuff and set it to like pixel art, but low resolution. But we don't need to do that. Uh, play that draw. Let's make him red as always. Player at X, player at Y, player at width, player at height. Okay, so this function just draws the player as a red rectangle. We set the color, and then we draw the rectangle as that color, because we've just set it. <laughs> yeah. So now, if we put this in, into draw player, it's the same as just putting it right there. Um, and at first, it may seem kind of weird, but if we have a million different functions, and we have like function one, two, three, four, and instead of just putting all of those as a list right here, just like over and over and over again, we can just drop them right into player dot, our draw underscore player, and our main dot lua will be a lot cleaner. But again, that's just a preference thing. You guys don't have to do that, and I'm done talking about that. Um, let's do the player dot physics function and apply some basic physics to the player. Okay. So this was how we did it in the smooth player tutorial, smooth player movement tutorial. So we're going to do player.x equals player.x plus player.x bell times delta time. Make sure you multiply it by delta time. I don't think I did that in the, in the tutorial that I had for smooth player movement. Okay, and then we need to do friction, and since I'm a total noob, I'm going to go into the Supreme Arena folders and steal it from my player file. Plug. Supreme Arena is the awesome zombie survival game that I'm working on. And you can check it out at SockMonkey.com. Just plug in while we wait for this to start up. Come on. Package. Uh, this I will put this in the description and you can just copy and paste this uh, equation from the description. It's a really helpful equation. Oh gosh. Player of physics. And it just applies really smooth friction to the... Wow, well, I never thought anybody would ever say smooth friction. Smooth friction to the player. And I, I just love it. I got it from somebody on the forums. I forgot who exactly. I'll probably say it in the smooth player tutorial. But yeah, the love to do forums are awesome. So let's put this into update player. Don't have much time left. I want to at least finish the player first before we do anything else. Um, I guess we could keep him into one bound area for now, um, until we decide if we want to have like a map or something. So let's set up, a, let's make sure he just can't leave the screen at first. So let's make a player.boundary function. Uh, let's see, if player.x, oh, I have a dog bark barking in the background of this video. Then we're going to set player.x equals 0 and player.x value equals 0. So this will just stop the player from going off the left side of the screen. Let's do the same for the top. Y, let's do it we haven't even run this game yet. We're probably going to get a billion errors. So let's start. Then let's do the right and bottom side of the screen. So player.x plus player.width. So we'll set uh, the play the screen width variable and the screen height variable after we write this into the code. Oh, dang. Screen height minus player dot height. And then we need to set the velocities to zero. Uh, setting the velocities to zero helps a lot because if you don't do that, when you collide with something, it'll take, and you move off of that, like if you're running into the right side of the screen, and you can't go any farther, and then you try to go to the left, it'll take like a second before you start to go, because the velocity is still positive, and if you're going to the left, it needs to be negative, so it like, has to go all the way back down to zero, and then go over, if that makes any sense. If you just, if you reset it to zero, it usually just gives it a nice feeling when you collide with stuff. 
Okay, let's put that on update player. And, well, it might be good to make him move. <laughs> so let's do that next. Okay, I think I'm breaking the 10 minute mark by a little bit. But let's just make a move and then we'll all end this tutorial real quick. So let's do write if player dot. Oh, wait, no. If love dot keyboard is down. Let's do a at WSD so we can shoot with the arrow keys later. And player dot XL plus some player dot speed. So what this does. Okay, so we're. One, one sec, let me finish this. Let me scroll down so you guys can see this a little better. I know I'm going. To, this tutorial is going to be a little long, but I'd, I'd like to explain this to you guys. So basically, if you're holding down D, and the player's X velocity is less than the speed, then it's going to add to the velocity. So basically, the velocity goes up and up and up smoothly, like with a nice smooth feel, until it hits player dot speed, which is 2,250. That way, it doesn't just keep going up forever and ever. So I I do that with all directions. So let's just uh, I guess we could just copy paste this for the left movement. So replace D with A. Replace uh, less than with greater than negative player.speed because it's going to be going to the left. So you got to subtract here. So let's, let's subtract it until it's um, until it hits player.speed. Negative player.speed. Um, let's copy and paste it two more times so we can do it on the Y axis. Oh god. That was not... Okay, come on. Okay, so let's just replace the letters first. Oh wait, no. Okay, so W. And we're gonna replace XVEL with YVEL. Um, and then yeah, do that with all of these. We have a bunch of XVELs here. Let's split these up so it's a little more clean. Y axis. Yeah, you guys don't need to do this. I just like to try to be as organized as possible. Usually don't succeed. Let's replace A with S so we can go down. Place XVEL. All the XVELs with Y bells, the Y velocity. Let's change less than negative to le or greater than negative to less than play dot speed. And subtracting play dot. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. This should work for player movement. We're probably gonna get an error at first just because we haven't ran this in the entire tutorial. So let's run it. <coughs> Again, it takes a while to run now, and it may not. It's going to be pretty laggy considering I'm using QuickTime Player. That seems to take up a lot of my computer's memory. And you know, this game's pretty beefy we're making. Come on. Come on. So if you guys have any ideas for the game, leave comments and I'll definitely, cons like, I'll probably do them. If you guys, so, because I'm thinking you just shoot enemies that come from the sides of the walls. But we could have power-ups, we could have, I don't know, any, we could have a multitude of things. Okay, come on. Okay, player dot load nine. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> you guys probably saw that way earlier. Cool. So it made it to the top of the file. Let's see if we can make it to the bottom. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, if you guys want stuff like that, know that I'm probably gonna do a uh, platformer walkthrough, game making walkthrough with Love2D in the near future, probably right after this. Because I know a lot of people ask me about that, and I think it would be pretty cool to teach you guys about collision detection and all that stuff, and how I do it. Because everybody does it differently. Um, yeah. Player Lua 34. Oh, we forgot it. Dang it. We forgot to set the screen width and screen height. So let's go into main.lua. When we, uh, on the boundary function, we forgot to set screen width the width of the screen, which is love.graphics get width. By the way, I'm using love 0.8.0, but it's in it's in 9.0 right now, or 0.9.0. Uh, just because the ga the big game I'm working on, Supreme Marina, is I haven't updated it yet, but I'm pretty sure everything is the same. I mean, except for the I mean, okay, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure everything we're going to be doing in this tutorial will work with. Uh, Point nine. So if you guys, but if you guys run into any problems, just tell me. Because I can always just download it and then uninstall it every every time I record. So it's not that big of a deal. Wow, we've been recording for 14 minutes. I promise this wouldn't be long. I'll stop as soon as it works.
getting errors, that's fun. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm thinking we'll do enemies next. Or bullets. Probably bullets first, actually. Looks like it's gonna work. I have no clue of telling whether it is or not. Oh, there we go. Can you move? Yes. And you can run into the wall. And the speed feels about right, but I can't tell because it's lagging really bad. Okay. Hope this guy's helped. I hope that... <laughs> Hope this helped you guys out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm probably just gonna record the next one right after this. If you guys have any suggestions for the game, just tell me, and we can all work together as a little small community. Um, add me on Skype, Monkey Bacon, if you have any problems or if you just want to chat. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.